Hello and welcome to another episode here on Cactus Dry Dock and in the Dry Dock today I'm giving you my feedback and advice wearing my Star Wars First Order armor made by Imperial Surplus. After two years of trooping, the pros, the cons, trooping for charity work and sadly why I'm selling it. <laughs> Let's make it real. <laughs> So if you haven't already done so, check out that playlist of building this awesome First Order Trooper kit made by Imperial Surplus. Link in the descriptions down below. Now a few years ago, I documented this entire build from costing, box opening, construction and paint. And so I thought it would be a good conclusion to feedback my experience wearing this armour out and about and joining clubs. And so if you're thinking of becoming a Stormtrooper or are lucky enough to already own the armour and thinking of going out trooping or joining clubs for the very first time, this is the video for you. Also, I'll explain why I'm selling my prized possession. After completing my build, my first experience wearing it was to pose for pictures to join a few clubs so I could parade with other troopers at events with clubs such as the 501st and the Outlanders. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail regarding the clubs as that would make a whole video in itself. So if you're interested in joining the club and want my humble opinion and experience with them, pop a comment down below and I'll make that happen. So, what did I learn? First thing, it takes ages to put on first order armour, especially for the first couple of times at least, as there's so many parts that have to be put on in a sequence. And also, as you spend so much time making it, you're really worried about breaking it accidentally or scuffing up the pristine gloss white paint work. That's if you painted it. So what I learnt is that you really need to lay out all your pieces where you can reach them, as it's bloody difficult to bend over once you have the bottom parts on. So my advice, practice putting it on a few times by yourself and streamline the order of operations, such as laying it out on a raised surface like a bed or table in order of putting it on. Then it's not so much of a faff when you're rushing around gearing up before an event where you're most likely to break it. The second lesson I learnt was comfort. Adjust the armour to fit your body, as armour kits by all manufacturers tend to be a one size fits all approach, such as height and girth. So you want to make sure to adjust it so it's reasonably comfortable, but also you want to make it look accurate as well. And so you're able to wear it for really long periods of time, especially when you're going to events. This can be done with padding, trimming, or sanding back sharp edges. Also, it can get pretty hot in that helmet and the lenses steam up. So think about adding fans inside the helmet, either do it yourself with computer fans and a 9 volt battery or off the shelf setups which are usually designed by troopers for troopers on Etsy or eBay. And although not relating to comfort, height is an easy modification you can add that makes you feel great. Although the OG of the first order stormtroopers, John Bioga, is 5 foot 7 which is the same height as me, I added insoles from Amazon to give me that extra inch of height and made me feel more imposing and in character, or at least in my mind. Oh, and don't forget to pee before putting it all on. Lesson 3. Armour needs constant maintenance, as you're essentially wearing a wearable model kit due to it being manufactured from plastic and glued all together. So don't get too precious over that spotless paint job, it will wear chip and sometimes crack depending on how long you wear it and what you do with it. So just like an aircraft after each outing you'll need to examine it and address minor issues before they get worse. The most common issues are cracks which can occur along the seams that are put under a lot of stress where I found occurred on the yoke, scuffs that need buffing out and tears that can form from tiny splits on the plastic edge. And lesson four, if possible, have a spotter. And by that I mean someone to help you put on all that armour and actually be your bodyguard if you're wearing it out and about in public. This mainly applies if you're not attached to a group or club out in public, as the clubs usually have their own escort, sometimes dress up as an imperial officer, which looks so cool and in character. As I heard many stories from fellow stormtroopers about kids poking, kicking and throwing things at them and the odd rowdy adult that gets a bit too enthusiastic. 
Also for safety, a spotter is just that. As the vision from outside, this helmet is so poor that you need warnings. As if there are steps or any obstructions that are low down, they need to help you around them or just warn you. And they're in the best place to help you if something pops off your armor, especially when you're shaking out the bugs for the first time. So what are my feelings about being a trooper? This has got to be the most satisfying, not only cosplays, but outfits I've ever worn. And the love and sheer joy and look from children as well as adults when you walk around the room or out in public is epic. Oh, and the last lesson, and a really important one, your blaster. Now, I spent ages making an accurate 3D printed blaster designed by the Free Horsemen. I added light and sound effects, and I absolutely love it. Check out my video build in the descriptions down below. But this can break away too easily if knocked about, as it's made up from loads of bits, bit like a model kit. So the risk of dropping this and breaking it is all too real. So you have a few options. Although not accurate, Buy a Hasbro version that's made for being mistreated and repaint it. After all, it's just a toy. Or you can find a maker that molded a foam rubber version like they do in the films. However, I've only known there to be an E11 blaster, but not one of these. Or you can do what I did. Be that badass trooper with the right baton. This is another Hasbro toy, but they're black series and top of the range collectible. This can take a lot of abuse looks way cooler and has light and sound effects. Oh, so after all that effort, why on earth am I sending this incredible piece of art that I adore? Good question, good question. Well, it's not because I regret it or no longer want to pretend to be a trooper. In fact, it's the best excuse for a man to wear a tight black spandex. I love the design, the experience and the feeling it gave me. When you look into the mirror for the first time wearing it, you are completely transformed. Your identity disappears as soon as you put on the last piece of armor, which is the helmet, or as the community called it, the bucket. And unlike any other costume I've worn, you don't even have to act. The armor does 90% of the work. So being stationary is like being in character. So why am I selling it? So I'm selling it to buy another kit from a different manufacturer. Because at the time of wanting this kit, many years ago, the only decent armor, in my opinion, being sold was by a company that folded called Anavos. So after extensive research, I bought the next best available kit and that was from Imperial Surplus. They're still in business, the customer service is excellent, so please check them out and click on the link down below. This kit was so good and even passed the 501st strict approval so I could go for the full induction later, which only needed a few minor adjustments in the way I fit it. However, since then, Anavos is up and running under a different name. Yono Novo, and are selling their kit, which went through an incredible manufacturing process to make the platform plastic really crisp and easier to put on. So with the funds for my Imperial Surplus armor, I'm ordering the Diono Novo kit. I will start a new instructional playlist building it. Also, I'll be incorporating everything I learned from my last armor into this one, not only in making it accurate, also more practical for wearing it out and about. So be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you in the next episode. In the meantime, my name's John Child, I'm a naked trooper, and I'll see you back here on Cactus Dry Dock. You take care. <laughs>